Hey everybody, welcome to Civil Air Patrol's High Altitude Balloon Challenge. My name is Captain Bob Roberts out of the Greenville, South Carolina Squadron, and I am joined by our co-national director, Susan Millette, with National Headquarters. And we want to give a very special thank you to two individuals. One is our very own national commander, Major General Edward Felka, as well as our national director for aerospace education, Dr. Jeffrey Montgomery. Uh, doc Dr. Montgomery, a uh, special thank you to you. We can't do the High Altitude Balloon Challenge without your support. And I can tell you that uh, every year that we've done this now for the last, this is now the third year, uh, Dr. Montgomery has been just massively supportive. Um, so thank you, gentlemen, for your support this year again. I do have one sad piece of information, unfortunately, to share with all of you, especially those of you that have been with the program now for uh, a, a couple of years. Um, we did lose a great American hero. Um, Colonel Joe Kittinger did pass away just a little while ago, and we are going to greatly miss him. Uh, Colonel Joe, just, you know, uh, like I said, an American hero. Um, he is, he expressed great desire, um, even after his passing, to stay involved and see that this program continues. Um, he took special steps to help with that. Um, and so at this point, uh, we are naming him our legacy ambassador to this program, and uh, we are continuing on with the Kittinger Cup. For those of you that have never been part of this uh, High Altitude Balloon Challenge, what is it? Basically, in a nutshell, what it is, is you work with your cadets. Uh, it can be senior member helped, but it has to be run by the cadets. And you will design and develop experiments that will go inside of test tubes. These test tubes will then all be loaded underneath um, weather balloons, basically, that will then go up to or above 100,000 feet. Uh, we typically get them right close to 100,000 feet, and many times we get them just a little over 100,000 feet. It's always exciting when we get them over 100,000 feet. It's just a milestone. Um, but whether they get over or they're under, it's usually right around 100,000 feet. And so we fly your experiments. The balloons will pop, and then they will come down under a streamer and parachute, and then we retrieve them, and then we send them back to you. And then what you do is you take a look at your experiment, and you decide what was the outcome of the test. You will actually have two vials. You will have a control vial and you will have a flight vial. The control vial gets shipped in the mail the same as your flight vials. This way, everything that your flight vial underwent getting to the test site will happen with the control vial. The only difference between those two is that one will go up to 100,000 feet and one will stay on the ground. Um, and then once it's down, it will be packaged, sent back to you, and then you can see what the difference is. And how did that change your... Um, your experiment. Did, it, uh, did, did you meet your hypothesis or did you learn something different or did not work at all? Some of the best findings we've seen in this program are when something completely unexpected happens. Now, when we're actually going to fly the balloons, it's going to be on August 5th. Now, that will depend on the weather. Um, it also will depend, we can do tracking analysis to determine where we think the balloons are going to land. It's usually pretty accurate within 24 hours. And so what we'll do is if the balloon is, is set to land, you know, uh, in, a, in a busy residential area, we're probably not going to fly it. Um, you know, if it, if it looks like it's going to land right in the middle of a highway, we're probably not going to fly it. If it's going to land in the middle of a major city, we're probably not going to fly it. Um, so we're going to look at the weather, uh, the winds, where it's going to land. And once we know that it's probably going to land in an unpopulated area or a sparsely populated area, and our crews and air crews and drone teams and ground teams, that they can all be safe uh, going to retrieve the, the, the experiments, then that's how we're going to do our go, no-go. So right now, we are expecting to have our flight on August 5th. If that date does not work, our backup date is August 12th. If, for whatever reason, it doesn't work on either one of those days, then we'll let you all know what our next um, our flight date will be. The national, uh, national conference will be the weekend after that, so we won't fly the weekend after that. Um, and then we'll have delays you know, when you have to return your results and stuff like that if we, it takes us longer to fly them. But for right now, it's August 5th. All right, so a couple of experiments. Now, the actual vial is a 50-milliliter vial. These will, after you register, these get mailed out to you. So you'll have plenty of time to take a look at the vials, how they work. Um, your weight limit is 40 grams, and that's with the capsule. So when you uh, put everything in the capsule, weigh all your experiments and the capsule, and it has to be less than 40 grams. No if ands, or buts. If it's 40.1, um, you might fly if we've got room for it. 
but you'll be out of the competition. It has to be 40.0 or less. Um, there also has to be a couple of restrictions. No liquids. Um, you know, there's many things that can expand and when you get, you know, when you lose the pressure of earth. Um, so no liquids. There's no food that requires refrigeration. These are going to be shipped in the mail. They're going to sit, um, you know, in a, a school room uh, probably for a couple of weeks. So nothing that needs refrigeration. Um, obviously, I think it, you know, I shouldn't have to say this. Nothing that's alive, you know, so please no crickets. <laughs> um, be amazed what people put in these things. Um, you know, if it's alive, then it's a no-go. Um, no radioactive materials, um, no explosive materials. And uh, very important, a lot of the teams have gotten really good with doing some really great science experiments that require something to be activated, whether that's a battery is turned on, whether that's some type of test strip that has to be entered, just something has to be quote unquote activated. Um, we can do the activations, but a couple of quick things about that. You're, you, you have to tell us in a really detailed manner exactly how you want us to do it. Um, and it has to be very simple to do. Um, we're not going to be able to do anything complex. As you can imagine, we have a l very large number of these test files that come in. Um, and the other thing that's really important is these are going to be activated the night before. So don't put something in that's got like a two-hour battery. Um, you know, it's, it's, the battery will be dead by the time uh, your experiment gets into, this, into the air. Um, so they're going to be turned on the day before. They'll be left in the boxes. So that's also why it's really important. Make sure you don't have something that's going to heat up um, because you're going to heat up in the box um, and you could hopefully not, you know, not start a fire or something, you know, but we've seen some people do some cool stuff with like resistors and capacitors and uh, just be careful with that stuff. If it generates heat, we don't want that in the vial. So it's very important. You can have multiple projects inside of one capsule. Um, I want to say that again. You could have multiple projects inside of one capsule. However, a difference this year from last year and the previous year before that is that this year you're only going to submit one slide. Um, so you can fly multiple projects, but only submit one of them for judging for the competition. Um, all right, so here's the 2023 dates. This video is going live March 20th. Uh, this is considered our actual kickoff. Our registration will be open um, tonight. And then you have until May of 22nd at midnight uh, to register. Anything comes in after that, um, you can email us. We may fly you, but you won't, you'll be out of the competition. Um, and then July 22nd, after you register, we'll be sending out the boxes, the vials to everybody. And then on July, you'll have until July 22nd. So you've got all of June, all of July. We've given you two full months. We've extended this year. We got two full months. Um, and then you'll have to send us back your projects. And then, as we mentioned before, August 5th is the, the launch event. We'll have a live broadcast. Usually it's about three and a half to four and a half hours long. Uh, we are expecting to fly three balloons again this year. Uh, back update again, August 12th. And then you'll be sent back those projects within the next day or two. So depending on where you live in the country, you'll get your test, you know, your, your vials back within a few days. If you're in Hawaii or Alaska, it might take you a little bit longer. Um, and then you have until October 2nd to submit your final results and your video submissions. And then October 23rd, assuming our launch dates are good, uh, we will have our awards presentations. Okay. Again, uh, very important. All teams are flying. We're launching three balloons. Um, that was more than enough last year. I expect it'll be more than enough this year. If we get a thousand of you that want to fly this year, then send them in. Uh, we'll get more balloons if we need to. So, so, you know, absolutely. We're flying everybody. Um, also please, please try to ensure that you're going to take part in the program before you register. Uh, I know things come up. It happens. I'm not going to be mad at you. Um, but you know, we do get probably somewhere about a quarter to 30% of people that register take part don't end up flying. Um, and we do calculate things like weight of the balloons and payload capacities based on who's registering. So please, please, please try your best to make sure that if you are going to register, that you are going to take part of the program. Again, I know things come up. No one's going to be mad at you if, if you have to drop, but do try to uh, make sure you can actually fly. Um, again, we are going to have live production just like in the past years. We'll have a live launch day about four, uh, three and a half to four and a half hours. I think it's pretty typical for our launch days. 
Okay, so I want to take a second to talk about what our award categories are and their prizes associated. Um, and then we're going to go into a little bit more detail on each of these in just a second. So the first is the hand-drawn patch and the digital drawn patch. Again, very similar to last year. Please only submit one of these. Um, if you submit more than one, so let's, view, let's say you submit a hand-drawn patch and a digital drawn patch, we don't know which one to judge. Um, you know, we may reach out to you. We may not reach out to you. Um, so please only submit one, either a hand-drawn patch or a digital drawn patch. Um, the pre-launch video, $200. Um, we're cutting the time down a little bit to make it a little bit easier for folks. Last year, the time went up to three minutes. This year, we're going to go to two and a half minutes, uh, make it a little bit faster for you to do. Um, the post-launch documentary video is $500. Uh, that we're reducing from six minutes to five minutes. Again, just trying to make these categories a little bit easier for you. Um, the creative science slide, basically the best looking slide. Um, and then we have the creative science slide, uh, $300. Innovative science slide, $600. We're gonna go into what's different between the creative science versus innovative science in just a minute. And then, and then we have the Colonel Joe Cup, uh, $5,000. And that's really the combined score of all of these um, categories. Okay. okay, so starting our categories, we're gonna talk about the hand-drawn patch. Um, inside the rubrics, you're gonna find very specifics, like how big it can be, it's gotta be round. Um, there's very specific go-no-go -no -go qualities that you have to include in your patch in order for it to get judged. If you miss some of those go, no go um, qualities, then you're, you know, we appreciate it. We love looking at it, but you won't be up for an award. Um, we, every year we, you know, we had some really great designs that are just missing something. And it's really sad because some of them are competitors to win. Um, so definitely take a close look at all of the rubrics, make sure you're following those. Um, so here's some good examples from 2021. And then if we look at our digital drawn patches, um, you can see same thing. They're gonna have the same, similar rules. However, they're gonna be, you know, someone's probably doing it with Photoshop or, you know, getting graphics offline. Um, super important this year, <clears throat> no AI generated images. Um, now I have cheated. If you look at the, uh, our high altitude balloon challenge logo, I created that. Um, and I did that with, as an AI generated image. I literally said, high altitude balloon, colorful space. And it created that. <laughs> so um, absolutely amazing um, what this AI generated uh, images can do now with almost you know, no feedback into them. Um, they just look incredible, which is why you can't use it. <laughs> it's not fair. Um, so no AI generated images. Um, my, my assumption is there's a big difference between what we will su see submitted and what, uh, what an AI generated um, image creation uh, program could do. So if we think you're, pro, you know, so I, I'm assuming all of you aren't going to do any AI generated images. If we think something looks AI generated, we'll reach out to you just to make sure that you understood that this rule exists. Um, but, uh, but yeah, please, you know, don't let the Terminators win yet. Give us a couple more years. Um, all right, so the creative science category. So, a lot of times when you're doing science experiments, they're going to go up on posters. They're going to go on the walls in colleges and research labs. Um, and it's really important that your slides are visually a, a appealing to people. That you're going to make somebody want to stop and look at your project. Um, even in the digital world, I can tell you when I walk up and down the halls at different science colleges, uh, I see you know graduate stu students are putting up their posters on the walls. Um, so it's still done, even though we live in a world that social media and everything's presented on the web, um, people still put the stuff up online. And so it's important to kind of know how to present your information. Uh, now, the, also, um, I'll, well, we'll talk about the, uh, the innovative science in a second. So the pre and post launch documentary videos, again, we're at two, and a, two minutes to two and a half minutes long for the pre launch video, and then two and a half um, I'm sorry, um, four to five minutes long for the post-launch documentary. Um, we did discuss whether or not we wanted to do the pre-launch videos this year, make it a little bit easier on everybody, but we took a look at the pros and cons, and we actually do think that there's a lot of value in trying to put together a, a relatively short two and a half minute or less um, pre-launch video. Now, the one important thing is you can reuse that video in your longer post-launch video. You don't have to create a brand new video. So if you've got 
two minutes of great content and you want to build off of that for your post launch, please feel free to do so. Um, all right, let's see. Now, the innovative science, going back to the science slides. So now the innovative science slide um, is really all about that. It's about the science. It's about the engineering. It's about your experiments. Um, you know, it doesn't have to look pretty. Uh, that's, that's what the creative science award is. And really this is who had the best experiment? Um, so people had some really fantastic ideas. I will say, I cannot wait to see what you all do this year. We had some good projects the first year. We had some excellent projects the second year. And also the first year, we had a couple of good handful of great projects. Last year, we had a lot of excellent projects. Um, so you guys really upped your game last year, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you all do this year. Um, all right, one thing that's different this year. Last year, we said, you know, please submit a slide for each of the experiments that are in your vial, not this year. Um, please only submit the slide that you want us to judge. Um, you can have this, the, you know, the cadets, you can have your teams put together slides, but only send us a PowerPoint with one slide. Um, that's what we're going to judge. If they have multiple slides, we're going to disqualify you. Um, as you can imagine, when we get a lot of these, it takes a lot of effort to judge these. So we want to make sure we're judging your best work. Um, all right, enough of that. Uh, we again, one of the big changes last year, and we're going to continue on this year, is we have a very detailed grading rubric. Um, you know, the first year we didn't have as detailed a rubric, and that was a lot of people's um, you know suggestions to us was to you know Im improve the rubrics, and we spent a lot of time last year, and we're going to basically reuse a lot of that this year. Um, there is some minor differences, and so if you go to the High Altitude Balloon Challenge website you'll be able to find that information. Also super important, there is go, no, go criteria. I mentioned it before. If you are missing something that is in the, you know, in the go, no, go criteria list, then unfortunately we may give you our opinions on how you would have done, but you'll be out of the competition. All right, uh, we're wrapping up here in just a few minutes. One very important thing is that this program is cadet driven. It is senior sponsored. So this is not like when you did the Pinewood Derby races when you were kids, um, you know, and you might have had a parent that basically made the car for you. And it was a collection of mom and dads competing against each other, um, you know, with the kids standing there. <laughs> that is not the case. Uh, this should be cadet driven. Uh, we want the senior members to help. But please, please, please ensure that this is, you know, cadet driven. Uh, your leader should be a cadet. Um, all right. With that, registration is now open. Um, please go ahead and register between now and May 22nd. Um, as we have done in the past, your units can combine, but only one of them registers. So if you have multiple units that are going to work together, please don't submit a registration for each because then we're going to send you multiple vials and multiple shipping labels. It's just a lot more money. Um, so please only submit one registration for the entire team. Please just in the comments field, indicate the other uh, units and the leaders of that unit um, that you're going to be working with. Also, when you're registering, please ensure that either the squadron aerospace education officer or the squadron commander are the ones actually doing the registration. Uh, we do require it to be under one of them. And with that, that's it. I want to thank everybody. Um, really looking forward to seeing how many people register this year. If you're running into any problems with registration whatsoever, uh, we have a high altitude balloon challenge email address. I'll put that down in the description down below and, or you can always go to the high altitude balloon challenge website. All the details for this program are going to be there. That's where you're going to go find what the rubrics are. Um, everything that was mentioned here in this video will all be on that website. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free. You're not bothering anybody. Um, if you have the question, probably other people have the question. And so if you ask a question, you know, we may be able to answer it, not just for you, but for other folks that are at, thinking to themselves the same questions you are. So please, if you have any questions, let us know, send us an email. Um, both Susan and myself both uh, keep an active eye out for those emails and usually you'll get one of us to respond within 24 to 48 hours. Um, with that, I can't wait to see uh, you all and your, all your experiments this year. Uh, good luck and thanks everybody. Have a great night.
Hey, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you did, please do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content. Up here on the left-hand side, you're going to see another video from our, uh, this playlist. And if you click down here, you're going to see another video on our channel. Hope you guys all have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.